Hey folks, today I'm going to teach you how to screenshot like a boss. Coming up next on Tech Talk America. Hey folks, and welcome to the class. Knowing how to take a proper screenshot is a skill that I think everyone should know. Today's video is sponsored by our friends at Power Photos. If your Mac's photo library has become cluttered with duplicates, then Power Photos is the solution for you. I have an entire class to teach you how to use it, and while you cannot get this app in the App Store, I do have a link for you down below, along with a coupon code for 15% off. We're going to start off today's class with a little challenge. In just a moment, I'm going to show you two screenshots of my desktop, and I want you to try to figure out the difference between the two images. Ready, set, go. All right, so here is image one. Take a very good look. I promise this is not some clever trick of mine to get you to appreciate my drone photography. Okay, let's switch over to version two. All right, again, take a look very closely. Can you tell the difference between the two images? Let's go back to one real quick. And now back to two. If you don't see much of a difference, you're not alone. The answer is that the first screenshot was taken with the Mac's default settings, which resulted in a 2.5 megabyte PNG file. The second image was after I modified those settings to change the default format to a JPEG, which reduces the file size by more than half. To make this change, we're gonna be using the app called Terminal, which comes with your Mac. All you need to do is open up the Applications folder, then go into the Utilities folder and double click on Terminal. At this point, there is a short code that you'll need to type into this section, and to make your life a little bit easier, I have pasted that code in the description of this video. So just go ahead and copy and paste that into Terminal, and then tap the Return key to lock it in. Now look, there are several shortcuts for screenshots, but the only one that really matters is Command Shift 5. When you press those keys on your keyboard, you'll see this toolbar appear at the bottom of your screen. This first option will take a screenshot of the entire screen. The next option allows you to roll your cursor over a specific window to capture just that application. So for example, if I open up a few different apps, you'll see my cursor turn into the camera icon. To capture the image, just click. The next item in this list will allow you to specify what portion of the screen to capture. You can reposition this window and you can drag the corners to refine your selection. Once you're good to go, just click the capture button over here on the right. When you do, you'll see a little preview of the screenshot appear at the bottom right corner of your screen. If we leave it alone and don't touch it, it will disappear after a few seconds and the file will be saved to your default location, which for most people is the desktop. Now, that being said, I am gonna teach you how to change that location in just a moment. If we click on the preview, it will open up in the application known as Preview. And one of the things that's great here is all of the annotation tools at the top. When you're done, you can click the share button at the top right to send it directly to supported applications like mail, messages, airdrop, notes, and photos. For those of you using one of the new MacBook Pros with the new touch bar, Command Shift 6 will allow you to take a screenshot of the touch bar, which sounds very dirty. Hey, Bill, you wanna see a photo of my touch bar? There is actually one more type of screenshot that I want to teach you, but for some very strange reason, as of today's date, the only way that you can do this is from an iPhone or an iPad. I mean, you technically can do it on a Mac, but it requires a third-party plugin, which they now charge for, and I'm not really a big fan of. The name of this type of screenshot is referred to as a full-page screenshot, and it's specifically when working with websites. The problem with taking a normal screenshot of a website is that it only captures the visible portion, and in some professions, that can be really frustrating. For example, if you're trying to edit a website. To take a full page screenshot of a web browser, you do need to use Safari from either your iPhone or iPad. To take a screenshot, just press the volume plus button and the power button, something I'm sure you've accidentally done a million times, then tap on the preview at the bottom, then tap at the very top where it says full page. Now, if you scroll through, you'll see that I can mark up any part of this image. I also have to say, this is where the Apple Pencil is a godsend. Now, if you like that last trick, you might like this one as well. Let's say you've just taken a screenshot on your Mac, but when it comes to making annotations, you really want to be able to make use of your iPad and the Apple Pencil. All you have to do is tap on this icon at the very top to instantly transfer that image to your iPad, and as you make annotations, you'll see them appear on your Mac. These next two icons here in our screenshot controls are for video. This first icon is for capturing the entire screen, whereas the second option is for recording a cropped window. 
One of the newer features that I use all the time is the option to copy the screenshot to the clipboard. Now, I don't know about you guys, but many times when I take a screenshot, like on social media, if it's of some sort of a cute meme, I don't really actually care about saving it. So when you're using this feature, you can just copy and paste it wherever you need, whether it's into an email or into a text message without actually saving the file to your desktop. Speaking of decluttering one's desktop, most people end up saving their screenshots to the desktop. What I would recommend you do instead is create a new folder for screenshots. And you can put it on the desktop, but you could also put it in the documents folder or wherever you want just to get it out of the way. To make your new folder the default location, just click here into options and then go to where it says other location and point it to your newly created folder. Real quickly before we go, I just released the first episode of my new podcast. If you didn't hear about it, the name of the podcast is called The Creative Source, and we're talking all about the creative process with creative professionals from all over the globe. The first episode just came out. New episodes are gonna come out every single Monday, so I hope you'll tune in and subscribe from whatever podcasting platform you prefer. Thank you so much for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, I really appreciate it. If you hit that thumbs up like button, leave me a little comment down below. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching everyone. This is David A. Cox with Tech Talk America. Class dismissed.